world. To the world. To the evil. Yeah. Woe to the world. To the world. For deception. Now we're going to read the law. So we're going to start uh, in Exodus, the 20th chapter, from verses 1 through 17. Okay, then. And God spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God, which hath brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image, or any likeness to anything that is in heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, for that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. By the Lord thy God, and I'm a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children, and to the third and fourth generation of them that hate me, and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shall thy labor and do all thy work, but the seventh day of the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day. Before the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor, thou shalt cover thy neighbor's, thou shalt not cover thy neighbor's house, thou shalt not cover thy neighbor's wife, nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor's. Now let's go on there. Ecclesiastes, the 12th chapter, read verses 13 and 14. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. For God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. Now let's go into Revelation chapter 22, verses 14 and 15. Blessed are they that do his commandments. They may have right to the tree of life, and may enter in through the gates into the city. But without our dogs and sorcerers and whoremongers and murderers and idolaters, and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. So, sisters and brothers, that is the law. If you keep that and do God's commandments, like Jesus said, you will get Amen. eternal life. The Lord put me together because people use the word quickening and don't know what it, what it means. The word quickening means to make a lie. So the title of this lesson is The Quickening, a product of keeping the law. The quickening, a product of keeping the law. Because if you're going to be quickened or made alive in the word of God, sisters and brothers, first mentally and then made alive physically, you will have to keep God's law. And we're going to let you know that if you don't keep his law, or if you're uninformed, then you are spiritually dead. It's all that simple. In order for you to stop being spiritually dead, you have to be made alive through the word of God. That is the quickening. But let's see what Jesus found when he came here, when he started picking his apostles. And then, so we will get the understanding that there are two type dead, physically and mentally. 
We're going to Matthew, the eighth chapter. Matthew, chapter eight, chap chapter eight, and we're going to pursue this. Matthew eight, and we're going to start reading at verse 21. Matthew eight and verse 21. Okay, go ahead. And another of his disciples said unto him, Lord, suffer me first to go and bury my father. That's when Jesus was picking his 12 disciples, his 12 apostles. And when he picked his one, he said, suffer me first to go and bury my father. But what did Jesus say? Go ahead. But Jesus said unto him, follow me and uh -huh. let the dead bury their dead. He said, follow me and let the dead bury their dead. So you have two types of dead, sisters and brothers. You have a mentally dead, I might say spiritual dead, and you have a physical dead where you are, uh, where the body stops breathing and it lays down and turns and decomposes. So now, what makes you spiritually or mentally dead? We're going to go into Hosea, the 13th chapter. <clears throat> Hosea chapter 13. And we're going to pursue this. It's because we have a lot of people that don't know it, but they're walking around spiritually dead, sister and mother. And don't have a clue. But still, they say, I am a servant of God. Well, we're going to investigate this a little bit. Hosea chapter 13, and we're going to start at verse 1 because we're going to see how you become dead. Hosea 13 and 1. Okay, read it. When Ephraim spake trembling, he exalted himself in Israel. E Ephraim and Israel is talking about the same people, sisters and brothers. So he said, when Ephraim spake trembling, he exalted himself in Israel. Go ahead. When he offended in Baal, he died. But when he offended in Baal, Baal is a pagan god, sisters and brothers, and represent all paganism, he died. And what else? Go ahead. And now they sin more and more. Uh huh. And have made them molten images of their silver. Go ahead. And idols according to their own understanding. Uh huh. All of it the work of the craftsmen. They say of them that the men that sacrifice kiss the calves. So now, since he offended in Baal, Started worshiping paganism, so now it's gotten worse and worse. Mm -hmm. They made images and everything else and start uh, worshiping them. Like people have right now with pictures on the wall and they worship the picture. That means that you have died and your death is getting worse. Mm. And in order for you to come out from under that death, sisters and brothers, you have to get some understanding in the word of God and start keeping his laws and statutes. Now let's go into Romans the 8th chapter. Because that's how uh, uh, Israel was dead when the Lord had came is because they had started worshiping paganism. Israel had got so bad, sisters and brothers, until they started worshiping the snake that Moses put on the, on the stick, had given him some kind of pagan name. Right. So they was totally dead. And as long as you are not in the Lord, that's where you are. Romans 8, and we're going to start reading that verse 1. Romans 8 and 1. Okay, go ahead. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, uh -huh. who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. Now, people say this, well, there's no condemnation in Christ Jesus. I said, but finish it. Who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. Mm -hmm. So we're going to find out what that Spirit is before we get out of here. But go ahead and read. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus uh -huh. have made us free from the law of sin and death. Now, the law of spirit of life in Christ Jesus made us free from the law of sin and death, sisters and brothers. Only Jesus could do that because the law of animal sacrifice could not do that because it could remove sin. So if you can't remove sin, you can't remove death. Right. Remember, Adam sinned and death came in on the back of sin, sisters and brothers. So now, in order for you to remove sin, Jesus had to come. Animal sacrifice couldn't do that. And I'm going to show you. Let's go into Hebrews, the 10th chapter. Hebrews chapter 10. That's why as long as Israel was sacrificing the lamb, just like they did down in Egypt, sin still was on the scene and death. It's still on the team since Jesus came. However, you don't have to die the eternal death. But only 
Jesus could remove it. We're going to start at 10 and 1 because no other law could do it. 10 and 1. Go ahead and read. For the law having a shadow of good things to come uh -huh. and not the very image of the things can never with those sacrifices which they offered year by year continually make the comers there too perfect. So no matter what you did, you could not become perfect. In other words, you know, if Jesus hadn't come and died for the sin of people, it wouldn't have made no Godhood, uh, at least for the dead people. I know that much. Anyway, sister and brother, why couldn't the law do, uh, uh, make them perfect? Skip down to verse, uh, for, verse 4 and go ahead. Verse 4, go ahead. For it is not possible that the blood of bulls and of goats should take away sin. Go ahead. What for when he cometh into the world, he said, Sacrifice and offering thou wouldest not, uh -huh. but a body has thou prepared me. Now, blood of bulls and goats can remove sin, and the only blood that can remove sin was the blood of Jesus. But being that Jesus was God before he was man, he had to have a body prepared for him, mm -hmm. something that could die. Go ahead and read. And burnt offerings and sacrifices for sin, thou hast had no pleasure. Go ahead. Then said I, lo, I come in the volume of the book, it is written to me, to do thy will, O God. He said, look, you didn't have no pleasure in an animal sacrifice. Why? Because it didn't remove sin. He said, so look, I'm coming in the volume of the book to do your will. What was his will? The will of the Lord was to die for the sins of the people. Mm -hmm. Skip down to verse 10 and read it. By the which will we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. Now that was the Lord's will, that he had a sin offering. And he's going to do that by offering the body of Jesus, the body that he made for him for sin. Skip down to verse 14 and go ahead. For by one offering he hath perfected forever them that are sanctified. Now, he had by one offering. He didn't have to kill animals every day like the priest had to do because people were sin sinning every day. Right. And on the day of atonement, had to make an offering for the whole nation every year because the nation sinned. But he needed this body, so where did he get it from? Let's go and look. Let's go into Hebrews, the second chapter. Back right up to Hebrews, the second chapter. And we're going to start reading that. We're going to read at verse 9, 2 and 9. Okay, go ahead. But well, we see Jesus, who was made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death, uh -huh. crowned with glory and honor. Go ahead. That he, by the grace of God, should taste death for every man. Now, he came and he wants, he's going to die for every man because now he is the sin offering. He is the one that could get us out from um, under the law of sin and death. And, he, and no one else. Skip down to verse 14 and go ahead. For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, uh -huh. he also himself likewise took part of the same. Go ahead. That through death, he might destroy him that had the power of death. Because he had to come and die because he was a sin offering. Right. So he, when he died, that destroyed the power that Satan had. Go ahead and over us. Go ahead and read. That he is the devil. Uh-huh. And deliver them who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. So he had to come and die so we could be delivered. Because we're always our li lifetime subject to bondage. Everybody knows that they're going to die. Mm-hmm. And like Paul said, if Jesus didn't raise, then the people that's died have perished. Right. There ain't no coming back. But go ahead and read. For verily he took not on him the nature of angels, uh -huh. but he took on him the seed of Abraham. Go ahead. Wherefore in all things it behooved him to be made like unto his brethren. He might be a merciful and faithful high priest in things pertaining to God to make reconciliation for the sins of the people. So when he came, he took on the seed of Abraham, sister and brother. And he became as one of us, flesh and blood. So that made him a more merciful high priest because he knew the things that we go through. Yes, sir. And he knew how we suffer a lot of things, and that gave him more patience to deal with us. Mm -hmm. But he came, sister and brother, because he's the only one that could get us out from under this death sentence of sin and death. Now let's go back to Romans, the eighth chapter. Go back to 8th chapter because there's some things that we need to examine, sisters and brothers. Romans chapter 8. Romans 8, and we're going to start reading at verse 3. Romans 8 and verse 3. 
because it told you that Jesus came in the likeness of sin and sinful death and condemned sin in the death, uh, 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 sin in the flesh. Go ahead and read verse 4. Go ahead. For what the law could not do. Verse 3, I'm sorry. Verse 3, go ahead. For what the law could not do, and that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh, uh -huh. and for sin condemned sin in the flesh. Now, this was not the law God got raw law, this was the law of animal sacrifice. Because what it could not do, pay attention, but what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh. Weak through the flesh like what? Because it told you that the blood of bulls and goats could never remove sin. Right. So he sent forth his son to condemn sin in the flesh. For what? Go ahead and read. That the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Now he sent, came his son and condemned sin in the flesh because the animal sacrifice couldn't do it. But when he came and died for us, then it made, us poss made it possible for us to take advantage of the righteousness of the law. In other words, we could keep God's commandments now and profit from it. So you had two laws right here. One was too weak in the flesh. Therefore, it couldn't do nothing. But then it's forward that the righteousness, when Jesus condemned it in the flesh, then the righteousness of the law, which is commandments, might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. In other words, as long as we walk in the law, we are walking after the spirit, sisters and brothers. So we have it right here. The law of animal sacrifice couldn't help us. Mm -hmm. It was too weak in the flesh. But when Jesus came and took advantage of us, then we could keep the righteousness of the law. In other words, we could keep this commandment, sisters and brothers. We're going to look at this. Let's go into Romans, the seventh chapter. Romans, the seventh chapter. Because we need to look at this law, sisters and brothers, that we are able now to take advantage of. We are able to profit from it by doing it. Romans chapter 7. Back right up to Romans 7. And we're going to start reading at verse 5. Romans 7 and 5. And I'm going to explain a few things as we go along, sisters and brothers, because the way it's written, it would make you think that we are talking about a, 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 a sin, a, a law of sin, that the law itself is sin. No, no. We're going to carefully look at this. Seven and five. Go ahead and read. For when we were in the flesh, the motions of sin, which were by the law, did work in our members to bring forth fruit unto death. Now, we're going to look at this. It said, for, we, for when we were in the flesh, the motions of the sin, which was by the law. But I want to throw something in there. The motions of sin, which was identified by the law. And we're going to show you later that that's what the law do. It identifies sin. So the motion of sin, uh, uh, which was identified the law, which was, uh, 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 go ahead and read. Did work in our members to bring forth fruit into death. So now, this is the sin that the law identified. That as long as we didn't know it, this same uh, sin that we was committing, sooner or later was going to kill us because the wages of sin is, the, is death. So when we was in the flesh, the motion of sin, which was identified by the law, did work in our members to bring us to uh, fruit of, unto death. Go ahead and read. But now we are delivered from the law. Now we are delivered not from the law. We are delivered from the sins that the law identified, sisters and brothers. Because we're going to show you. It is the law that identified these. So we're not delivered from the law itself because the law itself won't do nothing to you unless you break it. But we are delivered from the sins that are identified by the law. Go ahead and read. That being dead when we were held, that we should serve in newness of spirit. Now being dead when we were held, dead what? Dead under sin. And this law identified it so we could stop, so we could, uh, so we could see what we were sinning, put an end to it, and then start living in the newness of spirit. In other words, it made us alive spiritually. Finish that. 
and not in the oldness of the letter. Uh-huh. Go ahead. What shall we say then? Uh-huh. Is the law sin? So this is what Paul tells you now. See, because if you didn't understand the other two verses, you think that he was saying that the commandment was sin. Mm-hmm. So now he made it clear right here. So what shall we say? Is the law sin? Go ahead. God forbid. Go ahead. Nay, I had not known sin, but by the law. No, I had not known sin, but by the law. Why is it that he knew it by the law? Because the law identified sin. It pointed it out. Look what he said. Go ahead. I had not known lust, except the law had said, thou shalt not covet. I didn't know that I was lusting after this brother's house, this brother's wife, this brother's property, except the law said, thou shalt not covet. Then I knew that I was lusting. Because the law identified it. Yes, sir. That's why I said that the sin, law identifies sin. Go ahead and read. But sin, taking occasion by the commandment, wrought in me all manner of concupiscence. Uh huh. But without the law, sin was dead. So sin taking, uh, taking occasion by the commandment. Worked in me all kind of uncleanliness. That's what this concomitants mean. Because the law pointed out all that the cleanliness. Read that verse again. What verse was it? Eight. Go ahead and read it again. But sin, taking occasion by the commandment, wrought in me all manner of concupiscence. Now, you can say it was sin, identified by the commandment, worked in, all, in me all kind of uncleanliness. Go ahead and read. But without the law, sin was dead. Uh-huh. But was, because of the law had known it, sin was dead. I didn't know it was there. Go ahead. Well, I was alive without the law once. Uh-huh. But when the commandment came, sin revived, and I died. It was obvious that Paul wasn't dead physically because he wrote this, he was writing this letter. Here. Right. But what happened? He was alive. He was a live sinner. Once. Yes, sir. But when he read the commandments and saw that he was sinning, he simply stopped sinning. That's what he means, I die. He stopped sinning and he started living to the Lord. Go ahead and read. And the commandment, which was ordained to life, I found to be in the death. Now, that's what, what did it mean, the commandment, which was ordained to life? Sisters and brother, when the young man asked Jesus, in Matthew, the 19th chapter, good master, what should I do to get eternal life? He told him first, don't call me good because ain't none good but God. But if you will enter into life, keep the commandments. Yes, sir. So the commandments, which Paul saw, that was the, which was ordained to life, Paul found to be unto death. Go ahead. For sin, taking occasion by the commandment, uh -huh. deceived me and by it slew me. Sisters and brothers, we're learning something here. We'll find out that without the commandment, there ain't no sin. Because there ain't nothing to point it out. Right. That's why the commandments and sin is being talked about like this. For sin, taking occasion by the commandments, or either for sin, which I was identified to me by the commandments, or pointed out by the commandments, deceived me, and it slew me. In other words, when I saw that I was sinning, I stopped. It's all that simple. That's it. I stopped. That's not hard to understand, sisters and brothers. Mm. But let's pursue it a little further. Let's go into Galatians, the second chapter. Galatians, Galatians chapter 7. Because when you die, as a sinful, uh, uh, chapter 2, brother, Galatians chapter 2, when you stop sinning, that means you have died in the area of sin, but then you are made alive somewhere else. You're quickening somewhere else. That is in the spirit of God, which is his word. You start to walk in it. You start to live it. Galatians 2, and we're going to start reading at verse 19. Galatians 2 and verse 19. Read it. 
For I, through the law, am dead to the law, that I might live unto God. For I, through the law, that's the law of commandment, sisters and brothers, are dead to the law of sin and death. I, through the law, am dead to the law. What law? The law of sin and death, that I might live unto God. So when he saw the commandments, he stopped sinning, and now you start to serve God. Go ahead and read. I am crucified with Christ. Uh huh. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. That's why you get baptized. You say you're crucified with Christ. You go in this water, an old sinful man, and you come out sin free, and you walk in newness of life. He says, so he's alive now, but not him. You're living the life that Jesus, Lord's life. Go ahead and read. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, uh -huh. who loved me and gave himself for me. This is not a life I live. I live by the faith. And so I believe in God. Yes, sir. Who loved and he gave his life for me. Mm -hmm. So I'm living and I believe in him. I believe in his word. Therefore, I'm going to walk in it. Read the next verse. I do not frustrate the grace of God. Uh-huh. For if righteousness come by the law, uh -huh. then Christ is dead in vain. No, he said, don't frustrate the, 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 the faith of God. If righteousness come by the law, then Jesus died in vain. What law he's talking about here? That's why you have to have some understanding. If the law of animal sacrifice could get you eternal life, then Jesus had no need to die. That's right. He died for nothing. No, no. That's why he had to die. So he could give you a free gift. That's the only way you're going to get eternal life. Finish that. That was the end of that, brother. Now let's go into 1 Peter. 1 Peter, the first chapter. And we're going to start, we're going to read one verse, verse 3. Because Paul is letting you know quickly that I, through the law of God, his commandments, I'm dead to the law of of sin and death. Mm -hmm. Because the law, God's commandments, are ordained to life, sisters and brothers. When you start keeping them, you will be on your road to immortality. Right. To live forever. But in order for you to do that, you have to die as a sinner and you have to come, become alive in the Word of God. That's what the word quickening means. To make alive. 1 Peter 1, and we're going to read one verse, verse 3. 1 Peter 1 and 3. 1 Peter 1 and 3. Okay, read it. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Go ahead and read. Which according to his abundant mercy. Which according to his abundant mercy. Have Begotten us again into a lively hope. Have begotten us again to a lively hope. How? Go ahead. By the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. By the resurrection of Jesus from the dead, sisters and brothers. That gave us a lively hope now. Now we can get out from under this death sentence that we have been mm -hmm. in prison in. Because he came and showed us how to be done. Keep the law, die right, and you will be raised and live forever. Right. That have given us hope. He begot us to a lively hope, sisters and brothers. A lively hope. Now we have been quickening in the spirit. Because he's telling you, if you want to do what I do, get what I got, do this. Walk in my words. Keep my laws and my statutes. Salvation is just like any other gift, sisters and brothers. Right. You have to do something to keep it. Mm -hmm. So God have given you a free gift. And when, he, when Jesus rose from the dead, that gave us a lively hope. Because he had already died and reconciled us. But it is written, we are reconciled by his death, but we are saved by his life. Yes, sir. Let's go into Colossians, the third chapter. Because I just wanted to, let you know it's a, it's a spiritual thing, sisters and brothers. The whole thing, what we are trying to do is become immortals, just like, like our creator. But before you can get that physical change, you have to have 
of mental change. Your mind has to be shaped into the same mind as your creator. And when it is, it will change your behavior. And you're going to walk in the spirit. That is, walk in his word. Then you will get eternal life and can't nobody condemn you. Galatians 3, Colossians 3, Colossians 3, and we're going to start at verse 1. Colossians 3 and verse 1. Okay, go ahead. If ye then be risen with Christ, uh -huh. seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. So if you be risen with him, see, that don't mean you didn't die and raise with him physically, but you have rose with him mentally. Right. So now you seek those things that are above. Go ahead. Set your affection on things above, uh -huh. not on things on the earth. In other words, think about immortality. Think about righteousness. Think about becoming God instead of things on earth, like getting a new house or a new car right. and having all the money and, all the, and, and drinking up all the liquor. Let your thoughts go beyond that. Go yes, ahead and sir. read. But ye are dead, and your life is here with Christ and God. So you are dead. What? Dead from sinning. Yes, sir. Now, but you are living with Christ, or so you have been made quickened and are made alive in the Lord. Now you are a servant of God. Skip down to verse 9 and go ahead. By not one to another. So now, if you have been risen with a Christ, you ain't gonna lie to one another. No, no, you ain't. Lie not one to another. Go Seeing ahead. Saying that you have put off the old man with his deeds. Seeing that you have put off the old man, the old sinner, with all his deeds. Go ahead and read. And I put on the new man. Uh-huh. Which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. And you have put on the new man that re that's renewed in knowledge yes, after sir. the image of him that created him. Once you become a new man, new way of thinking, new way of walking, eventually you will become a new being. From man to God. Right. But you have to put on that new man first, sister. You have to die as the old sinner and be quickened or made alive as a servant of God that keeps his laws and stature. Yes, sir. You got to get away from the flesh, which is carnal, and start dealing with the spirit, which is the word of God. Let's go back to Romans, the 8th chapter. Romans, the 8th chapter. These sisters and brothers, that's why Peter warned you about the uh, Paul's writing, how hard it is. Right. If you're going to navigate Paul's writing, you have to have some knowledge from Genesis to Revelation. And you won't be thinking like thing like Paul saying that you ain't got to keep the commandments no more. Right. And then you walk over here and Paul say you got to keep it. Now you say Paul is contradicting. Nothing here ain't contradicting. It's just that the Lord Peter told you, said Paul's writing is hard to understand, and those that don't, they twist it like they do other scripture. But we understand what God is talking about. He's talking about, first, you've got to be renewed in your mind. You have to have godly knowledge, and you have to walk in it. Romans 8 and verse 5. Romans 8 and verse 5. Okay, go ahead. For they that are after the flesh, do mind the things of the flesh. So if you, you know, if you ain't, if you after the flesh, in other words, you ain't got no God at all in you. Your whole world, your whole God is material stuff. Yes, Go ahead sir. and read. But they that are after the spirit, uh -huh. the things of the spirit. If you're after the spirit, you do the things of the spirit. Go ahead and read. For to be carnally minded is death. Uh huh. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Now we need to find out what this carnal mind is if it's death. What is it? Go ahead and read. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God. Because the carnal mind is enmity, that means it's hostile against God. Yes, Go ahead sir. and read. But it's not subject to the law of God. Neither indeed can be. Because it is not subject to the law of God. Oh, it ain't. And as long as it is carnal, that is fleshly or earthly, it cannot be subject to the law of God. Mm. Welcome to a man rich in praise money, praise material things, and you try to talk the word of God to him, you're going to tell him, get out of my face. I got everything I need. Right. I remember as a guy in Washington Park always used to say all the time, don't give me, you, don't, you can keep Christ. Give me 
money and guns. No matter how we tried to talk to him, he would not see none of it. You know why? Because he was carnal and he was hostile against God because he hated the law of God. No matter what you say. So this is what it says right here. So what is it that's carnal? Read that seventh verse again. Go ahead and read. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, but is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. Now people are teaching that if you keep the law, you're a legalist. <laughs> you're a carnal if you keep God's law. We're in the spirit. But right now, the one that you think you're following, Paul is telling you here that it is the carnal mind. It is the carnal mind. That's hostile against God because it is not subject to his commandments. And as long as you think in world and your mind is carnal, you're not going to be subject to it. Now we tell people, people telling me I don't have to keep the commandments. Paul just told me here, if I, the people that tell me I don't have to keep the commandments are hostile against God because they're telling me that I don't have to keep the law of God. So who's carnal? That's food for thought, sisters and brothers, because what is wrong with the law, sisters and brothers? Right. Let's go into 119, let's go into a 19th chapter of Psalms and let's look at all the accolades that, the, that you get from keeping the law. Psalms chapter 19. Psalm chapter 19. And we're going to start reading at verse 7. Psalm 19 and verse 7. Because there is no flaw in God's law. There is no breach in his commandments, sisters and brothers. Mm -hmm. That's why Paul told you the law in the seventh chapter of Romans, the law which was ordained to life. Because the law is ordained to life. Jesus told a young man, if you want to get eternal life, keep the commandments. Psalm 19, and we're going to start reading at verse 7. Go ahead. The law of the Lord is perfect. The law of the Lord is perfect. Anything that's perfect don't have no breach in it. No, it don't. No flaw. Uh-uh. Go ahead and read. Converting the soul. Converting the soul. Because if you go keep it, you will stop sinning. Therefore, you will be converted. You will die as a sinner, but made alive as a servant of God. Go ahead. The Lord, the testimony of the Lord is sure. Uh, and, and the testimony of the Lord is sure. You can bank your life on it because that's what you're going, that's what you have betted on it. Mm -hmm. Your life, your eternal life. So you don't want to bet your life on something that's unsure. You want to bet your life on something that's sure. And the testimony of the Lord is sure. Yes, Go sir. ahead and read. Making wise the simple. Making wise what? The simple. The simple. I remember a guy told me one time, so he had a son, said this boy was ignorant, he couldn't read. So he got in this word of God and he come back home talking like a cottage professor. <laughs> yes, sir. Because the word of the Lord had made him wise, sisters and brothers. And we have to remember that. Go ahead and read. The statutes of the Lord are right. Uh huh. Rejoice in the heart. The statutes of the Lord are right. Rejoice in the heart. Go ahead and read. The commandment of the Lord is pure. Uh huh. Enlightening the eyes. The commandment of the Lord is pure. That is opening your eyes, sisters and brothers. Yes, what's sir. going on? Go ahead and read. The fear of the Lord is clean. Uh huh. Enduring forever. The fear of the Lord is clean and is doing forever. Go ahead. The judgment of the Lord are true uh -huh. and righteous all together. And the judgment of the Lord are true and they righteous all together. Ain't nothing wrong with the word of God, mm -hmm. sisters and brothers. I mean, not nothing. Skip down and read verse 11. Go ahead. Moreover, by them is thy servant warned. By them is thy servant warned. And, it, that, and these laws will warn you. Yeah, it will. If you keep doing this here, you are sinning. And the wages of sin is death. Stop doing it. So moreover, by them a servant is warned. Finish that. And in keeping of them, there is great reward. And in keeping of them, there's great reward. How, 
You can't get a reward that's greater than becoming God. That's greater than becoming immortal on the right side of the kingdom. Right. So why is it that people are kicking against the law? It's because they are spiritually dead. And the people that uphold the law have been quickened by the word of God. They've been made alive. Let's go back to Romans, the seventh chapter. But you have to think about it, sister and brother. The world have turned this thing upside down. Yeah, they have. Everything that's good and pure, they don't want it no more. Then people use Paul writing to try and kill God's commandments. Well, let's look at this in Romans 7. We're going to start at 12. Let's see if... If Romans, is, if Paul is killing the God's commandment. Right. Romans 7, and we're going to start reading at verse 12. Because if he's trying to kill the Lord's commandment, it's, it's a weird way of doing it here. It's just like I went to a funeral one time, and you had this Israelite brother going to teach the funeral, which don't believe in the resurrection, and he go to, <laughs> and he go to the resurrection in 1 Corinthians 15 chapter, which is the resurrection chapter, to kill the resurrection. <laughs> Why? It's because he was spiritually dead. So if you think that the law is no more, then you are spiritually dead. If you think that Paul teaches against God's commandments, then what is Paul do, talking about here? Romans 7, let's start at verse 12. Romans 7 and verse 12. Okay, go ahead. Well, for the law is holy. Wait a minute. The law is what? Holy. The law is holy? And the commandment holy. And the commandments is holy? And just. And just. And good. And good. Don't sound like Paul have something against that, do No, he don't. That is a mouthful. Go ahead and read. Was then that which is good made death unto me? Uh-huh. God forbid. Go ahead. But sin, that it might appear sin. Working death in me by that which is good. Now he said, look, that's which is good made death in me and holy no. But it was there to point out sin that it might appear for what it is. Sin, which right. was working death in me. Not the law. Go ahead and read. That sin by the commandment might become exceeding sinful. Because if you didn't have the commandment, you wouldn't know what sin is. Because no, sin wouldn't. is the transgression of the law. So if you're going to throw the law out of the window, you got to throw sin out the window too. Then everybody can do whatever they want. I can go and when this brother go to work, I can sneak in his back door and sleep with his wife. Oh no. I can steal his money. I can lie on him to get him to, to, to swindle whatever he got. I would have no limitation. Right. Because there is no law. Go ahead and read. But well, we know that the law is spiritual. But the law is spiritual? I am carnal, uh -huh. sold unto sin. It letting you know that as long as you're in this flesh and blood body, you're carnal and you're sold unto sin. So you have to meditate in the law because if you don't, you're going to find yourself going the other way. Skip down to verse 19. Verse 19 and go ahead. For the good that I would, I do not. It's letting you know. It's not the good thing that I would, I do not. Because I remember, sisters and brothers, I set out to do something, and all I had in my mind was to be helpful and do good. But some kind of way, it turned into something bad. I never intended to do it. But some kind of way, it flipped into ugly. Then that let me know. You in this flesh. There's certain things you can't do. There's certain positions you can't put yourself in because you might slip and you end up doing that which you would not do. Go ahead and read. But the evil which I would for not. The, for the evil which I would not. Go ahead. That I do. And I really, it happened to me, sister and brother, I have lived that. Mm -hmm. The evil that I would not do, I find myself doing it. Go ahead and read. What verse? 20. Uh-huh. Now, if I do that, I would not. It is no more I that do it. Uh-huh. But sin that dwelleth in me. Uh-huh. I find then a law that when I would do good, 
He was present with me. Ain't that something? He said, when I do that, I wouldn't. He said, I find there's a, you know, there's, uh, there's a, 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 a sin that's dwelling in me. I can't give in to the uh, desires of this body. Mm -hmm. I have to be aware at all times because the sin is here. And if I go back to my natural way of thinking, I'm going to sin every time. Yep. So he said, now, I find that there's another law in my members. Go ahead and read. For I delight in the law of God as the inward man. Uh-huh. But I see another law in my members, worn against the law of my mind, and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members. See, sisters and brothers, this goes with everybody. You can't ever relax and say, hey, I got it made. I'm safe. I don't have to worry about it no more. No, no. Because there's a struggle. Because this sin is trying to kill you. The law of sin and death is trying to kill you. And you have to transcend it with your mind. Because when you get it fixed in your mind that I'm going to serve God no matter what, then you will serve God. Go ahead and read. Oh, wretched man that I am. Look what Paul said. Oh, wretched man that I am. Go ahead. Who shall deliver me from the body of this death? Who shall deliver me from the body of this death? Because he is trying this. This body is trying to kill you every day because it wants everything. It wants the best food, wants the best house, wants the best car, wants all the money, wants everybody else, everything that everybody else has. He wants the world, this body wants the, the world to evolve around it. And it is concerned about, with its welfare instead of being concerned with your brother's welfare. So look what Paul said. Go ahead and read. I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then with the mind, I myself serve the law of God. Uh -huh. But with the flesh, the law of sin. He said, I thank God that with the mind, I serve the law of God. But with the flesh, the law of sin. Why with the mind? Let me show you why. Let's go into uh, Hebrews, the 10th chapter. Hebrews chapter 10. And we're going to start at verse 15, Hebrews 10 and 15. Because so many times, sisters and brothers, I've seen brothers come in this word and they be hot on it. And they find out that they're Hebrew Israelites. And then all of a sudden they turn to the left and start turning toward nationalism or toward physical things and forget about salvation, which is spiritual. All of a sudden, I want to be a great nation. I want to rule somebody. I want somebody to drop on the knees to me. And you forgot that God created you to be God. You have taken the low road. You Israel, you know Israel, the world know you Israel. But if Israel was enough, then we would never have gone into captivity. Why? It's because he said in Jose, when Ephraim, which is Israel, Offended in Baal, he died. And once we died spiritually and start walking contrary to the word of God, sisters and brothers, the drama started to come up on us. Yep. So now, we, as long as we can walk in the spiritual law of God, which is in our mind, then we're going to do what he said. That's what Paul said, oh, wretched man and a man, I am. Who should deliver me from the body of this death? I thank God that in my mind, I serve the law of God. But in my flesh, I serve sin. Let me show you what he's talking about. We're going to start at verse 15, 10 and 15. Okay, go ahead. Well, for the Holy Ghost also is a witness to us. When he said the Holy Ghost is a witness to us, that's talking about the word of God. We can read what he's going to say. Go ahead and read. For another, for after that he has said before, uh -huh. this is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, said the Lord. This is the covenant that I will make with them those say, uh, and those, after those days, said the Lord. He told you that in Jeremiah 31. Go yeah, ahead yeah. and read. I will put my laws into their heart. I will put my laws into their heart. 
And in their minds will I write them. And in their minds will I write them. That's why Paul said, in my mind, I serve the Lord God. Because yes, that's why it is, sister, brother. Yeah, it is. Once you study it and get it down in your mind. But when you come out of that mind and ain't contemplating on the word of God. No, it ain't. Or either you see something that can knock you off your dime just for a minute and the lust grab you, now you serve in the flesh. But as long as you are meditating in the mind where the word of God has been implanted, then you're going to walk in it. Mm -hmm. But you have to be made alive spiritually in order to walk in the spirit. And you made alive by the word, sisters and brothers, and nothing else. Let's go into 1 John, the second chapter. 1 John, chapter 2. Because I know, sisters and brothers, this is a hard lesson, but not if you pay attention to it. Right. It is talking about the spiritual development of your mind, which the Bible called a quickening. You have started to live for the Lord. St. John, chapter 2, or 1 John, rather, chapter 2. And we're going to start reading at verse 23. 1 John 2 and verse 23. Okay, go ahead. Whosoever denies the Son, the same have not the Father. Now, you people, yeah, that's what I'm saying. People trying to kick against Jesus and going to go direct and go circumvent him and go to the Father. Uh-uh. If you deny the Son, you don't have the Father. Go ahead and read. But he that acknowledged the Son have the Father also. Yes, go ahead. Let that therefore abide in you, uh -huh. which ye have heard from the beginning. So if you acknowledge the Son, you have the Father, you abide, uh, you have the Father also. And so let, therefore abide, let that therefore abide in you, which ye have heard. Pay attention. Which ye have heard from the beginning. It ain't talking about some astral form going into you. It's uh, something that you have heard. Go ahead and read. Yes, sir. If that which ye have heard from the beginning shall remain in you, uh -huh. ye also shall continue in the Son and in the Father. So if what you have heard from the beginning stay in you, then you will also continue in Jesus and the Father. So we're going to see what is it that you have heard that's going to keep you Let's go into St. John, the 17th chapter. St. John, chapter 17. Because you need to know what this is that you have heard. And then he said, if it remain in you. If it remain. It will keep you in the Son and in the Father. St. John chapter 17. And we're going to start reading at verse 1. 17 and 1. Okay, read it. These words spake Jesus and lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, uh -huh. Father, the hour has come. Glorify thy son that thy son also may glorify thee. So he wants his time to be glorified. Skip down to verse 5 and go here. And now, O oh Father, Glorify thou me with thine own self, uh -huh. with the glory which I had with thee before the world was. So he said, now, bring me back to where I was. To where I, when I was with you before the world was. Go ahead and read. I have manifested thy name unto the men which thou hast gave me out go, of the world. Go ahead. Thine they were, and thou gavest them me, and they have kept thy word. Go ahead. Now. They have known that all things whatsoever thou hast given me are of thee. Now, they know, any servant know that everything that Jesus do and say is given to him by the Father. Mm -hmm. That's his servant. He says, so they was yours, and you gave them to me. This is his servant. Go ahead and read. For I have given unto them the words which thou gavest me. Oh, so he didn't. Put some th something inside of them that's going to make them gyrate and kick, didn't No, it? no. He said, I have given to, unto them the words which thou gavest me. The words. Go ahead and read. And they have received them. Uh-huh. And have known surely that I came out from thee. Go ahead. And they ha have believed that thou didst send me. Now, they received this word. 
and they know that I come from you, and they believe you sent me. Go ahead and read. I pray for them. I pray for them. I pray not for the world. Oh, wait a minute. You mean Jesus didn't pray for the world? No, oh, no. Of course, if he did pray for the world, he'd be praying for sinners and people that's against everything that he stands for. Right. So he don't pray for, he didn't pray for the world. He said, I pray for them. I pray not for the world. Go ahead and read. For for them which thou hast given me, for they are thine. I only pray for the ones that you have given me. For they are yours. Skip down to verse 20. Somebody else he prays for too. Verse 20. Go ahead and read. Neither pray I for these alone. Neither pray I. He's telling me this apostles there. Neither pray I for these alone. Go ahead and read. But for them also which shall believe on me through their word. But for them also. That's talking about the people in the future. That shall believe in me through their word. What word is their word? The word that was Jesus' word. And what word was Jesus' word? The word that was the Father's word. Yes, sir. In that order. He said, that's who I pray for. So that which abided in you, if it stay in you, you will stay in Jesus and you will stay in the Father. So what is that that abide in you? The word, the sister word. and brother. Let's go into Colossians, the third chapter. Colossians chapter 3. Because people have complicated this thing. They've thrown so many ingredients into it until you don't know what to keep anymore. No, you don't. But the Lord has made it simple. My word, my word, my word. That is what will make you alive. That is what will quicken your mortal bodies. My word. And if you stay with my word, you're going to be all right. That is so simple. Even though this looks complicated, this is simple. Colossians 3 and verse 16. And look what it says here. We're just going to read one verse. Verse 16. Colossians 3 and verse 16. What's it say? Go ahead. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Go ahead. In all wisdom. In all wisdom. Because if it's in you richly, you are. Tune into all wisdom. Yes, sir. Go ahead and read. Teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. Uh-huh. Seeking with grace, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. Now, he said, let that word dwell in you richly. Mm -hmm. What else is this word called, sisters and brothers? What else is it called? Well, let's pursue it. We're going to go into St. John, the sixth chapter. St. John, the sixth chapter. Maybe we come up with something that sounds familiar, but then we're going to show you that familiar sound is not what you thought it was. Mm -hmm. St. John chapter 6. And we're going to start reading that verse 51. St. John chapter 6 and 51. 6 and 51. Okay, go ahead. I am the living bread which came down from heaven. Go ahead. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. Uh huh. And the bread that I will give is my flesh. Now, he's talking about eternal life, isn't he? Yeah, he is. If you eat of my flesh, you're going to live forever, and the bread that I give is my flesh. That's why when he put the bread in the wine, he said, this bread represents my body, didn't it? Yes, sir. Which is broken. Go ahead and read. Which I will give for the life of the world. Which I will give for the life of the world. Go ahead. The Jews therefore strove among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? Uh, uh -huh. Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Except ye eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, ye have no life in you. Uh -huh. Whoso eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood have eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. Well, I want to find out what that is that's going to get me eternal life. Yes, sir. 